All right, the Toyota that I just fixed, the one that was stuck in park, is back. This time the complaint is that the turn signals aren't working. Evidently they stopped working on the way home. So, let's see if we can't get this thing diagnosed and fixed. All right, first thing we do, how about we verify that the uh, turn signals aren't working right now. I got the key in, ignition on, so the turn signals should be working. And you can see we have nothing. And where's the hazards? Ah, here they are. Let's see if that works. All right, no hazards either. All right, that gives us a little bit of direction. Let's, uh, well, let's go pull up a wiring diagram for this thing. Let's see what we're working with. And while I'm looking up a wiring diagram, we'll just do a quick scan of this vehicle using the launch. We'll see if the there's, see if there's any codes in there that can help us out. Probably not, but it's worth doing it while we're looking up a wiring diagram. And as you can see, we don't have any fault codes. That's kind of what I suspected. All right, as you can see, I have a wiring diagram for our turn signals slash hazard lights because uh, they'll work on the same circuit. And we can see right here we got power coming in. Those are our fuses. This is our turn signal flasher. So that's a fancy uh, relay type deal that basically flashes the lights. And we got our combination switch. That's going to be our turn signal switch. This is our hazard switch. These are our lights, the actual turn signal lights. And then these are the LEDs up in the uh, dash. And then right here is our ground. So that's how the power flows through everything to ground. And so we can follow it in. We got two power feeds coming into this uh, turn signal flasher right here. And so let's see, we got a 15 amp fuse um, in, under the hood and we got a 10 amp fuse under the dash. This one is ignition. Uh, the ignition needs to be on. This one doesn't. And so they come in, and then obviously we got our turn signal flasher here. And then if we look at our combination switch, you can see right here in the middle, that's kind of our rest state. And then when you switch the switch, like in this case, um, we want to turn right. Basically, it completes the circuit here. And then that signal, this, this unit up here is sending a 12-volt signal out. And... This basically just completes the circuit and it goes down to ground. And so that's all it is. It's a pull down design circuit. And so that means there's a resistor in here because otherwise you couldn't put pull 12 volts straight to ground. You'd fry this. So there's a small resistor in there to keep it from doing that. Same thing on this side. We turn left and basically it's going to complete this circuit like this down to ground. So obviously for our turn signals to work, this switch needs to be switching properly. And we need a ground here. In this case, it's the left kick panel. And then if we go over to our hazard switch, so when you turn that on, it turns all four flashers on. Uh, it's the same thing. There's 12 volts coming down. The switch closes when you press the button, and it goes down to ground. In this case, the ground is the right kick panel. And it's the same thing. It's a pull-down design circuit, and so that means there's a resistor in there to keep it from burning up. And as you can see, we have two different grounds there. So, if there was a ground issue, well, most likely we'd have more electrical problems, but mo uh, for the most part, one of these would probably be working and then the other one wouldn't. Maybe, maybe not, but it's less likely we have one ground issue if both of these switches aren't working, but you never know what you can find. Electricity does weird things. And then over here, these two just come out and power up the lights and then they go to ground. So. Obviously these grounds need to be working, but usually if one or more of these grounds go bad, then the turn signals start acting silly and doing weird things more than just nothing works. Um, so a simple check we can do, we can go and uh, look at these two fuses right here, make sure we have power coming into our turn signal flasher. And then uh, obviously, so, you know, this is, this is our main player is the flasher and then power and ground. So we could do some quick uh, power checks and just make sure we got power coming in here and then we can go from there. All right, so now we're gonna go into the hood and look in the fuse box and we're gonna look for this 15 amp fuse marked HAZ or hazard, I'm guessing. All right, even though Toyota doesn't label their diagrams, at least they're kind enough to label the fuse box here. And obviously we're under the hood. And let's see, right here, that's our 15 amp hazard fuse. So we got three sets of fuses there, and then it's a second one down. So if we look over here, we got one set, two set, three sets. So this one right here. 
So let me grab a test light and we'll test both sides of this, make sure we got power. Now this one is full time, so we don't need to make sure the key's on. All right, just got a standard test light here. We'll just connect it to ground. And when we hit power, it should light up. Come on, there we go. And so we just want this to light up on each side. So there, we're good there. And we are not good on the other side. Looks like this fuse is blown. Can you guys see that? We're lit up right there. And we are not lit up right there. We can check the other fuses nearby. They're all good. Yeah, we definitely got a dead fuse right there. Well, as soon as we're right here, let's pull the fuse out and look at it. And yeah, can you see that? That is definitely blown. All right, so what causes a fuse to blow? They don't just usually blow just willy-nilly and on their own. Something causes this to blow. And let's think about it for a second. What's on the circuit? You know, we got a bunch of wiring and we have our lights. So either we got a wire somewhere in the circuit, one of the power wires obviously, touching ground somewhere, either intermittently or all the time, or one of the bulbs is pulling too much amperage and, and uh, causing it to die. So we're going to have to track it down. But before we do that, let's at least check the other uh, fuse. Let's see if it's blown also. All right, now we're going to go into the dash. We're going to look for this uh, 10, 10 amp uh, gauge 1 fuse. Make sure it's not blown also. All right, we'll do the same thing. I have the test light connected to ground still. We'll come up under here and pull this cover off. Well, that came off too easy. What is that? Looks like somebody has the wrong fuse in there. That was barely on there. Oh, actually, we'll need this. So we're going to look for, what was it? Gauge 1? Is that what we're looking for? All right, looking at our fuses right there. There's gauge 1. So let's see, this cover sits in there like this. So we want, should be one fuse there, two is uh, unoccupied, three, four, five. So the sixth one over, we're going to check that. Alright, let's see. So we said the second row, right? One, then unoccupied, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so right next to this big contraption here. You can see that side's lit. And that side. So both of them appear to be, or, or both sides appear to be good. So this fuse is good. I wonder if this big piece of crap is good. Yeah, it looks like it's working. It's wrong, but it's working. And I should mention I did have the key on for that test, otherwise we wouldn't have power there. All right, well, before I go and pull out the fuse saver and put it in there and, and not blow 50 fuses, I'm going to sacrifice one fuse. So I got the correct 15 amp fuse. Where's the, there's the blown one right there. So we got the same one. So we'll go ahead and put it in, see if it blows right away. And we'll know if we have, currently have a short to ground or if it's intermittent. And let's just test it real quick. All right, that side lights up, and that side. All right, so we're good. It didn't blow immediately, so that's a good sign. All right, let's do an experiment. Put the key in. Now we want to see, we'll test one side first, and then we'll test the other, and then we'll test the hazards, see if these things work. All right, so left turn works. We'll see how... See if it goes out pretty quick. All right, now we'll test the other side of the circuit. We'll test the right side. Oh, so our problem, as you can see, although I just sacrificed a fuse, I'm pretty sure it's blown now. Our problem is on the right side. So more than likely, um, either we have a short in the circuit or my guess is um, one of the bulbs is bad and pulling too much amperage. Alright, 
pull the fuse out and let's look at it. Can you see it? We smoked it pretty good. All right, so that's good. Although we sacrificed um, a fuse, we know that this side of the circuit appears to be good and that this side is the issue. And it, it only blinked about once or twice, I think. I'd have to review the footage and then it went dead. Okay, instead of blowing a bunch of fuses trying to track down this problem, we're going to use the fuse saver. In this case, uh, we got the fuse saver master kit, part number 8016. And we're going to need this wire with our uh, the appropriate end for our fuse. And we need the correct circuit breaker. These are all circuit breakers. They work just like a circuit breaker in your house. It just pops it instead of uh, blowing a fuse. In this case we want the 15 amp. Now the one caveat is these things are rated to run at 15 amps. So it'll run at 100% for an extended period of time without um, popping the, the circuit breaker inside here. If you want to, in order for this circuit breaker to uh, open up, it needs to exceed 15 amps for a, for a certain length of time. The greater the amperage over 15 amps, the faster it'll blow. So if it's only pulling like 15 and a half amps, it might have to go a minute or two before it'll pop it. Um, but if it goes to like 20 or 30, it'll pop it immediately. But uh, we just have to be mindful of that when we're using this tool. All right, as you can see, I have it installed in place of the fuse. And then when it blows, it'll pop up. This little button right here will pop up. So now we can do more testing. All right, now you can see I have the tool set up in here. The circuit's pressed, so it's good to go. So now we can do it again, and we won't waste a bunch of fuses. So there, we'll turn on this side, which we believe is good. This side seems to be okay. Seems to be running all right. We'll turn it off. Now we'll go the other way. You can see it only clicks once. Hmm. But I didn't hear this pop out. Now it looks like it's still intact. Well, let's see if it works. Now oh, look at that. It has not popped, but yet it only goes for a second, but that's the way that popped our fuse for sure. So it's not strong enough to pop this, but it'll pop the fuse, because like I said, it go. It needs a little bit more than 100%, so more than, what was this, 15 amps? So it needs more than 15 amps to blow this. Well, let's see what it does when we put the hazards on. So it only beeps one, or it only flashes once on both of them. All right, let's take a second to think about what's going on right now. We know when we turn our turn signals to the left, it's completing this circuit and everything seems to be working. And then when we turn it to the right, or we complete this circuit, then that's when we're having the issue. And it either blows a fuse, or it's screwing up our, uh, our fuse saver there. And so, most likely, if we think of the circuit design, like we said, this is a pull-down circuit, so 12 volts coming through with a resistor, and it's just being grounded. So, if we had a short here, short to ground, most likely our, it would just make our turn signal come on all the time and they wouldn't go off because it would just complete the circuit. Um, and because it's working one side and, and not the other, or it's working briefly and then it goes off, I don't think our issue is with the combination switch. It's just not acting like there's an issue with the combination switch. Uh, not intermittent enough or anything. It's very consistent. Um, and so I don't think there's anything wrong here or with the wiring. I think we're good right there because we're using the same ground for both sides. So I really don't think there's anything going on in here. Um, is there a possibility that there's a, you know, an issue with our turn signal flasher here? Well, possibly, but you see how it consistently works to the left and not to the right. Um, and we popped a fuse going to the right. I suspect that um, with our fuse saver in place, it's just uh, overloading this uh, this turn signal flasher, most likely because I'm, I'm leaning more towards that there's a short circuit somewhere. 
but it's overloading it and and causing it to not work there must be some internal circuitry there that um, that limits it just in case there's a short circuit uh, there, there's got to be some built-in protection in there um, and that's why we're seeing that with the fuse saver installed when we turn it one way it only flashes once and it stops the whole circuit um, so I'm guessing um, we're gonna have to look at this all these legs over here and try to figure out where our issue is and another reason why I think the issue is most likely over here and not over here in this portion of the circuit is because our hazard switch is doing the same exact thing as our combination switch and so that's two different switches with two different grounds and two different inputs going into this uh, turn signal flasher that are do that are creating the same exact problem and so that's what makes me think it's probably not in here or in this area we're probably um, needing to look over here and if you're curious where this turn signal flasher is it's buried up under the dash um, if I don't have to go there right now, I'm not gonna just because it's kind of a pain to try to do any testing up there. So we're gonna do easier checks, you know, at the bulbs and the wiring um, rather than go here. And if I don't need to go here, um, because it's such a pain to try to figure out and find where that is, I may make a separate video just showing where this location is. Alright, seeing as this one's quick and easy, the turn signal bulb is right there. So we can just look in here. Obviously, we can do a visual inspection, make sure nothing looks awry, not touching anything. These wires don't appear to be touching each other. But anyway, we'll unplug that. All right, we'll take the bulb out of the equation. So now it's just the wiring and everything else. All right, got the key back in it. You can see our left side works. Try our right side again. Nope, same thing. So it's not the bulb. Alright, looking at the front turn signal, we didn't see any issues, everything looked okay, pulled the bulb, the bulb did not appear to be the issue. So we can follow the circuit back around, so we need to go to the rear there. But uh, I want to point out that there's more than one circuit, this is only showing one on the factory diagram. Here we come over here to aftermarket diagram, and you can see there's our green with yellow coming in, our white with black. Same thing here, green and yellow, white with black. So that's our turn signal right there for the right rear. But you can see we also have our tail light and our stop light back there all together. And you can see these are tied together. So let's go pop the tail light out in the back there and see what we got. And I should mention on the diagram right here, these two turn signal lights are on the outside of the rear view mirrors. And this vehicle does not have those. So that obviously was an upgraded uh, model that had those turn signals on the mirrors. So we do not have to worry about these legs right here for our testing but if this vehicle did have those this would definitely be an area of concern because these the wires have to go through um, the door junction where it flexes and those are um, big time uh, problems where wires can get pinched and grounded so that'd be one of the first areas I look but on this vehicle we don't have to worry about it All right, as you see I have the tail light pulled out there's just two bolts on this side you take them out and then these two pins are right here and you just kind of got to pull to the side and this thing pops out this way and we'll move out. But look at I didn't have to go very far and I believe I found our problem. There's our green with yellow wire right there and somebody has tapped into it. Now it looks like it's been cut off, but I mean that is a whole lot of big dummy right there. Leaving, you can see that the wire is exposed right there. So I'm willing to bet that with this is shoved in there, it's going to go right on this metal and ground out. Man, that is some kind of stupid right there. So I suspect now that it's not touching anything, I bet our turn signals work. Let's go check it out. All right, as you can see, got the key in. We still got our circuit breaker in place of our fuse. We'll do our control test for the left side, and you can see it's still working. Now we'll do the right side again. Hey, look at that. It works. That wire was definitely grounded back there and causing our issue and just bringing down the whole circuit. And blowing fuses. And that's where I say fuses do not blow for no reason. There's usually a good reason. In this case, somebody did some shoddy work and that caused that. I'm pretty sure it wasn't the current owner. Um, I know them and they don't work on their vehicle, so I'm pretty sure this is even before they bought it. But who knows how long that ticking time bomb has just been sitting there waiting for this, you know, to, to ground out this circuit. So anyway, well, let's go get that thing fixed. And you can see... I got the blinkers on. You can see it's working no problem. 
I just removed this little tap and there's the wire that the wire they spliced in and unfortunately when they cut it off they just they left enough of wire in there that when you put this tail light back in there's plenty of metal back there to touch so unfortunately I'm gonna have to cut that and uh, probably splice it back together because I don't like how it's open like that well there you go there's the fix I'm more happy with that than leaving that wire the way it was or putting electrical tape just around it. Um, yeah, it's not perfect, but it's a, it's a butt connector with heat shrink over the top that has the sealant in there. So this thing will be weather tight and it should last the life of the vehicle now. And before I button everything up, just, we'll just test it and you can see the blinker's working just fine. So I'm 100% confident that this was our issue. All right, as you can see, there's a shot of our final repair. I wrapped it with some electrical tape, so we should be good to go now. And if you ever need to pop these in and out, they can be kind of a bear. Those little metal tabs into those plastic, they definitely snap in there really good. You kind of got to pry it straight out and try not to break the lens. And then I was saying over here, well, you can't see because it's kind of dark now, but just two bolts right there, two 10 millimeter bolts. All right, what do you think? Any guesses on whether I had to fix this side too? Let me know in the comments. Alright, now we can pull our fuse saver out of here. And I have a brand new 15 amp fuse. We'll get that installed. And get rid of all the carnage. And we'll get our cover put back on properly there and I made sure to put the cover over the positive battery terminal again and we'll do one last verification make sure our front turn signals plugged back in and while we're here let's fix this we'll take this incorrect fuse out and put the right one in so this is an ATM fuse and then this is the correct ATM-LP. You can see it's quite a bit smaller. So this is what should have been in there. And looking at the cover there, it is a 30 amp fuse like it's supposed to be. There, I couldn't push it up in the way with you guys in my way. Now it's correct. Now that snaps on there and it won't fall off. How about one last verification? Make sure these things work. There's one, you can see the reflection up there. And there's the other one, you can see the reflection. And it looks like I can see both rear ones are working also. And just for the heck of it, how about our flashers? All right, looking good. Well, there you go, hope you enjoyed that fix. All it took was a fuse and some uh, wiring repair and a little bit of knowledge and uh, critical thinking. Sometimes that's what it takes. We're not always about firing the parts cannon at stuff to fix it because sometimes that's not going to fix it. In this case, the fuse saver really helped out. Uh, helped me from burning up a ton of fuses because those things can be expensive. And hey, as always, if the video helped you out or you liked it, make sure to give it a thumbs up. Thanks for watching. And for those of you who stuck around to the end, what was your guess? If you guessed that there were more shenanigans on this side, you'd be right. There's actually two wires damaged on this side. Thanks for staying to the end.